In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use this drum switch to wire a motor to 220 volts to do forward and reverse. So before we begin wiring, I wanna talk about this drum switch really quick. The drum switch that I'm using is an RC brand, but if you have a Dayton branded uh, drum switch, you're kind of in luck, because they should have the same wiring diagram. Um, if you have a different wiring diagram, which should be on the inside cover of this, uh, of this switch, then you're probably in luck because I think I did a different video for one on a 120 volt motor. So maybe it could help you. If not, drop me a line or send me a message comment and let, I'll see if I can help you get that figured out. Um, but th let's go back to this switch. So my goal with all these videos is really to try to help you guys be able to figure it out and wire it for yourself to whatever you maybe own. Maybe you have a totally different 120 volt motor or or a 220 volt motor or something like that and maybe the leads are different or just something that's different. I wanna be able to help you figure it out. This, uh, this drum switch does have three positions. It has an off position, a forward and reverse. Notice the only difference between these, well, I guess the only difference between the forward and the reverse is there's the connections in between these two center terminals. Because there's six terminals on this switch and there's gonna be six terminals here on your schematic. Now, always with a 120 volt motor or a 220 volt motor, because they're single phase, you have to switch two of the wires. And it just so happens that we have two terminals on this switch that are able to switch, if that makes sense. So really, all, whatever the two um, wires are that need to be switched, usually it's eight and six, um, they're gonna get hooked up to these center two no matter what. And then we just have to figure out where the other ones go and you're golden, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at that motor really quick. Okay, so I got my wiring diagram here. First things first, we need to make sure that we are looking at the correct uh, wiring diagram. Obviously we have 115 volts and we have 230 here. Um, we're gonna be running 220 volts to this, but pretty much if you're in between 220 all the way up to 240, it's pretty much the same voltage. So don't, don't worry about this too much. Just make sure you're kind of one of those. Um, so we know we're gonna be on this one over here to the right. We can see that we need to attach T1 and T8 to line one. We're gonna have a bundle of wires, T2 all the way to T6 is what it looks like, that are gonna be INS. This is an abbreviation for insulate. What you're gonna do here is you're gonna go ahead and you're just gonna attach all three of these wires together, okay? And then we have T4 going to line two. And notice here at the bottom, it has from counterclockwise to clockwise switch six and eight okay so we need to we need to switch six here up to here and eight from here down to here which that's where our handy dandy little switch comes in so let's go ahead and let's go back to our whiteboard and i'm going to go show you how that's going to work okay let's go ahead and wire this thing up on the whiteboard and then we'll go ahead and we'll move down to the bench and i'll show you there one thing you're not going to see me do on the whiteboard is I'm not going to hook up a bunch of grounds. Uh, the grounds do exist. I will have them on my bench and I will point them out before I begin, but um, it just would get extremely cluttered to have it and ultimately it doesn't have all the terminals for my grounds in here. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at this. What I have here is I have my motor. I have my motor diagram over here just for quick reference as I'm going through this to help you guys. Um, I have my switch. I just have six terminals here. Hopefully you guys can remember from that uh, previous part where I showed you the wiring diagram or maybe you're holding your switch with your diagram and you kind of see what I'm talking about. And then you have L1 and you have L2. Um, like I said, again, there would be a ground added to that one, but we're just gonna have L1, L2. So to start this thing off, I wanna kind of do the basic things that I know have to happen first. I know that to switch from clockwise to counterclockwise, I have to change T6 and T8. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I take my T8, I'm gonna come over here, and I'm gonna do it to one side of my center two terminals. Remember, those are the only two terminals that change. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to take my T6, let me find it there for a second. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take it all the way down to the opposite side. Again, if I hook this thing up and it's running clockwise or counterclockwise in the reverse or something like that, it's set up wrong, all you need to do is swap those around and it'll fix your problem. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hook up some of my L1 and L2 stuff. So I can see the L1, all I'm gonna need to do is I'm gonna need to go ahead and directly connect it 
into one of my terminals because it's going to only hook to one and eight. So I'm just going to go ahead and slap it right there, really clean that up. Now L2 just needs to be hooked into T8 or T4. So I'm going to go ahead and just do that one really quick. Hopefully this isn't getting too messy for you guys. Okay, so now I just need to kind of hook up the rest of my bundles that I have left over here. So I'm gonna to have to have T1 needs to connect to L1 and T8. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do that one really quick, just because it'll make things really hard and messy. <laughs> We're just gonna come down, hook it to the other side. So now L1 and uh, T1 and then T8 will run in the one position, okay? Next thing we're gonna do is we need to figure out how to get T two and three down here. Ultimately what I would do is I would go ahead and I would connect these two together. We would probably just connect it like this. And I'm gonna jump multiple wires with this. I'm not sure if that's a code for uh, wiring diagrams. Come down and I'm just gonna go ahead and hook it in right here, okay? Now you could take and hook each individual wire on this one to each one of these terminals, but ultimately if I were doing a project like this, this switch would probably be some distance away, so running less wires would be ultimately cheaper. Okay, I wanna stop really quick. I wanna point out there's two different bundles here. There is the T1, T8, and L1 bundle, which I have in blue. And then I have a T2, T3, and T6 bundle. That one's gonna be the one that needs to be insulated. Notice how I've got them all connected. If you remember back to our schematic of our switch, in the forward position, those three terminals will be connected. And then in the reverse situation, it will be flip-flopped, meaning the center two will be changed, okay? And that is the actual action that is happening to cause the LRT6 and T8 to rotate from one bundle to the next. Hope that clears it up. Let's go ahead and we'll move down to my workbench and I will show you guys how to physically wire this thing up. All right, I wanna give you a quick lay of the land. What I have here is my incoming power, my motor, and then my switch. Notice on my incoming power, I have all of my grounds hooked up. There is an actual lug here in the back and then there's another lug here on my switch that I went ahead and hooked up. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go through the left side of my switch and hook it up to my motor and my wires. Starting from the top, first one will go to T1 and then the second one will go to T8. T1, this one will go to T8. Then the bottom one here will go to T2 and 3. Just gonna run one wire from this one up to, and then I'm gonna connect all three in that bundle. T2, T3. Just gonna put all three of these together. We're gonna go ahead and run a flip to the opposite side of the switch and do the rest of this wiring. So we're gonna go ahead and wire this side. Top one will be going to L1 and then the middle one will be going to T6 and that will complete the wiring of the switch. So we'll go ahead and we'll throw this guy in here. And then the second one will go to T6. Now I'm gonna connect the other ends. I'm gonna go ahead and go directly to my L1. And then go ahead and hook up my T6. Okay, now the last thing I need to do is I need to hook my L2 up to my T4. So I've got a little connector wire here that I'm just gonna hook into one of these. Or over here into the one line. I'm gonna go ahead and wire these two together. I'm gonna go ahead and put this cover back on really quick, just in case, uh, or just so I don't get electrocuted. That's awfully, a lot of electrical really close to my hands. So now I'm gonna go ahead and connect my 220 volts here to the wall. And we're gonna go ahead and give this guy a shot. So in the forward position, it looks like it is spinning, let's see here. Looks like that was counterclockwise. And in the reverse, it is spinning in the clockwise. Hopefully you guys can see that. Well, that kind of completes the video. Uh, if you made it this far, I just wanted to thank you. If any of these videos are helping you to wire something together or fix a problem or troubleshoot something, 
Uh, I'd love it if you hit the like button, even write me a comment. If you guys have any future projects that you just don't know how to do, please uh, send me an email. Uh, ultimately, the whole reason I'm wiring together a 220 motor is because somebody wrote me an email and I was like, why the heck not? So if you have a project like that and it's something that might interest me, love to check it out. Hope you guys have a great day. Talk to you later.